I hate myself. It was when he particularly said it made him feel sick watching me perform. That's what you want. That's what you want. Hi, how are you? I hope that you're very, very well. What video are we doing today? I know I'm in a different setup and I have different lighting. I'm really not sure about the lighting. I'm also not sure about the setup. This is a mural that I painted last week in my home. I'll leave a picture here of it. And so I wanted to show it in a video. <laughs> This is my Beetlejuice baguette, I call it. So, without further ado, I am going to talk about some audition experiences. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am an actor when they let me act. I mean, it's been a while, but you know, I went to drama school and I am a trained actor and I've done a lot of auditions in my time. And today I thought I would talk about some of my auditions that didn't go so well. For those of you who don't know me by the way, my name is Amy, I make a lot of theatre content on YouTube, so I talk a lot about Broadway and Glee and musicals and Star Kid and anything kind of musical theatre related I talk about pretty much. So if you do like that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and I'm also on Instagram and Twitter as well. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, so the first one, I auditioned for a Netflix series that isn't out yet, it's a new show. The audition went quite well, I thought, like I was quite happy with it, the woman I was auditioning with was so lovely and really friendly and gave great feedback and I felt really positive. When you audition for TV and film they often want like a full body shot because they record them and they want a full body shot and usually like a front, a side, a side. I don't even know what I was thinking. So she goes we'll do a long shot too and I thought she said we'll do a long shot so take off your shoes. So I was wearing like some creepers which have like a little sole on them and I was like well maybe she thinks that the sole's too big so I go to the side take off my shoes and she was like why have you taken your shoes off she looked at me like I was a crazy person she was like I said to show off your shoes and I was like I thought you said so throw off your shoes so I had to awkwardly put my shoes back on while she waited oh my god it was so cringe I didn't get the role obviously I actually looked up the show because it's been filmed now and the character that I auditioned for didn't actually make it to the show so I clearly wasn't good enough to inspire them to you know continue writing that character <laughs> Great. Oh well, I won't be on your Netflix screens anytime soon. Next one, I auditioned for an advert about gambling and to like know your gambling limits. Right, the night before I went to go and see Mamma Mia The Party, which is basically this like, this kind of immersive show at the O2 where you go and have dinner and then they like do a show basically kind of around Mamma Mia. It's set on the island where the film of Mamma Mia was filmed. Honestly, it's so ridiculous. When you're walking in, there's like pictures of the cast like photoshopped with like Colin Firth and Meryl Streep and stuff. That's his whole other story. It's highly encouraged that you get up and you sing and I sang my little heart out. And when I say sang, I mean shouted. So I woke up the next morning, I had no voice. This was also the first week I moved into this place. Nothing was unpacked, I had nothing. It was such a mess. And yeah, so I went to this audition, but I had no voice. So I'm sitting there outside the room where the previous people were auditioning and I could hear them like screaming and then like hysterically laughing. And I was sat there like, what the hell? I mean, I could barely get a word out. I was like, hi there, it's me, Amy. It was rough. I mean, I fully had no voice, honest to God. I don't know about you, but when I lose my voice, I can either speak really low or really high. It's like my main normal speaking range just has gone. I can do like whistle tones that I can't normally do and I'm a baritone. So we go into this audition. The casting director is lying down this is weird. I've done a couple of auditions here and there's like a big corner sofa. He was fully lying down and I was like, what the hell is going on here? He was very nonchalant, which is like whatever, but I mean, not, not the most profesh. So I'm paired with this boy. <laughs> we have to do a variety of things. So it's like we're on our first date and like he flirtily throws a pee at me and I throw a chip back at him. And then he like dunks his whole dinner on me and it's supposed to be like, know your limits, don't gamble. <laughs> We had to do one where we were friends at a dinner table and we were eating and then it was like, everybody's putting a little bit of hot sauce on, but I'm like chugging that hot sauce. Know your limits. 
And then we had to do one where you had to laugh a lot. So basically we're supposed to be like somebody told a joke and then everybody's laughing but then you like keep laughing and it's like ridiculous amounts of laughter. I tried to do it but like even laughing is hard when you have no voice. So I ended up doing this like, I mean crazy high pitched laughter. It was all that would come out. And when I finished the guy went, Did that make you feel a bit sick? <laughs> I was like, um... <laughs> Maybe. He's like, it made me feel sick as well. <laughs> I mean, that's what you want when you're auditioning. Thanks. Oh my God, I went to another audition and it was for a Christmas advert. I was supposed to be a beauty influencer and I was like, right, I understand I've got a YouTube channel, but I'm not, I'm not the beauty YouTuber person. And it said on the breakdown, it was like very like Love Island look. Look at me, I look like a bush baby. I am not someone who will ever be on Love Island. I talked to my agent and we were like chatting through what I should wear and do my makeup and stuff. And so I went along the next day and and so they came up to me with this iPad and they were like, we want you to be like these guys. And they showed me an iPad and it was Jeffree Star and James Charles. And I was like, oh, Jeffree Star and James Charles. And they were like, oh my God, have you heard of them? <laughs> I was like, yes. But also, they're both men. I can't be a man if that's what you wanted. As well, we were given like one line. And how do you, I don't know. It was just hard. It was just hard. And basically we had to go in and pretend to contour our face with a fork. <laughs> Apparently it's like a trend on YouTube. I'd never seen the trend. As well, they didn't give you a fork. So I was like trying to imagine it. And she was like, um, so I think that you do the fork slightly differently. And I'm like, why? It was just a mess. I didn't get the job, obviously. And then when the advert came out at Christmas, they'd cast a boy. <laughs> because that's what they wanted. <laughs> okay, so back in the day, this was when I was a kid, I auditioned for this like operatic pop group. I think the reference was like a young Alid Jones, you know, we in here. Or Alid Jones had something to do with it. So anyway, I auditioned. I don't know why, because I, I've never had like that sweet operatic voice. It's just not me. That's not how I was made. I sang I Dreamed a Dream as like a 12 year old. Now guys, I find it uncomfortable when children sing I Dreamed a Dream because they literally talk about having sex in the song. But anyway, I went along and sang it anyway. And you know when she goes, as they turn your dream to shame. And I went, as they turn your dream to shame. <laughs> if you can't get through without taking a breath in the long note, don't sing it. Embarrassing. What a surprise. I didn't get that either. Um, I just thought of another audition I did. I auditioned for Emmerdale when I was like, I want to say like 14 or 15. It was the part that I auditioned for was the one that Jenna Coleman actually got. I'm pretty sure. And I can't even tell you how angry I am at myself for this. We went to the audition place, me and my mum, and they gave us the sides, which is like the script for you to learn. And we went to the side and I'm really good at learning stuff very quickly. So I had the lines totally down. This was my first ever like real audition as well. And rather than acting out the scene, I just went in and read it because oh, I hate myself. In my stupid teenage, insecure, stupid head, I was like made fun of a lot at school, especially for like being extra and trying too hard and all that stupid stuff that people bully you for for no reason, but are actually really good traits. I went in and I was like, if I go in and I say the words without looking at the script, they'll be like, oh my God, what a loser. She's such a try hard because she learnt it so quickly. So I went in and I just read it. I didn't even like really act. I just went in and I just read the words. Do you know what? I'm so angry at myself and I hate past me. And I hate people who made me feel stupid for trying hard at things because then it made me not want to try hard. And that's why I'm now unsuccessful. I'm just gonna blame those like year eight kids for the rest of my life. That's a really embarrassing one. I feel really stupid about that. I don't think I've ever even told my mum about that. Maybe, I don't know. I could have been Jenna Coleman by now. Alas, I'm not. And then my final one was, I auditioned last year for Be More Chill in London. And first audition went great. And then the second audition, we had a dance audition. Now, there's so much more that kind of goes into this. 
than the actual audition. I'll tell you all the stuff that happened before. It was when I was pretty new to my home. I had my kitchen redone and it was just like the most horrific thing you could ever imagine. I'm still in legal proceedings with him to try to get my money back so that someone can fix it so that it actually works. My stress levels were high. And the night before my Be More Chill audition, I ended up getting this cat. This cat, I ended up getting new jeans. It was the most stressful situation ever. I did a video on it. it it was ridiculous. It ended up taking like hours to get him and it was supposed to just be like a pick up, get him and bring him home. Th and this was back in like October of last year. I've never experienced this amount of stress and anxiety in my life. I was a mess. I was crying about 17 times a day. I was a hot mess. I stopped making YouTube videos for like a month. I just couldn't. So the day of the audition, I should have been pretty chill, relaxing. I had the day off work. I just had to go and do this audition. I had Eugene and I was just gonna leave him for a couple of hours and then come back and it was all gonna be gravy. So that morning, Eugene goes missing. I think if that happened now, and if he does like manage to worm his way in somewhere and I can't find him for a bit, I'm pretty chill. But I was a mess. Right, this is gonna sound insane. So I'm looking around the house and I'm like, I'm sorry, this cat is not here. I go in every drawer, every cupboard, under everything, behind everything. I'm like, this cat is not here. But I also hadn't opened the windows or the doors or anything. So he had to be in there, right? He had to be. At some point in all this, I started to think, right, this sounds crazy. I know that this sounds ridiculous. I thought I had really lost my mind because I'd only had this cat for like, I keep calling him this cat. I'd only had Eugene for like, I don't know, eight hours or something. And a lot of that, well, I was asleep. So I was like, did I imagine having this cat? Was yesterday so traumatic that I imagined having this cat? And then I looked on my phone and I was like, no, there's a picture on my phone of this cat. And I was like, but did I just download this picture of this cat? I promise it will get to the audition soon. But this is just a snippet into why October was real bad for me. I sound ludicrous. So anyway, I think that I've imagined this cat and I'm like looking in the bowl of his like food and water and I'm like, is there any remnants of a cat there? Did I just put out this food for this imaginary cat? I'm phoning my mum, I'm sobbing and all this time I'm like, I have to leave for the audition soon, but I've gone crazy and I've lost my mind. Eventually, I have this idea, I'm still looking all this time. I had this idea to play cat noises on my phone. I couldn't think of anything else because as well, he's a tiny, tiny cat. Like if I call him now, he will come. But he was like eight weeks old, had no meow in him, was literally like minuscule. He was so tiny. I play cat sounds and eventually I hear this tiny, tiny squeak. He managed to get into a drawer and then climb behind the drawer. So he was like in between the back of the cabinet and the drawer in this tiny little spot. I found the cat, it was all fine. And then I had like a solid 10 minutes to get ready to go to the audition. So I go into London and I was waiting there in the audition beforehand and I was talking to this girl I know. I was like, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. You know, sometimes you get nervous before auditions, but I felt like I was gonna vomit everywhere. And I don't get that kind of nervous either. I get like a nervous wee or I just get like shaky. I didn't feel well at all. Don't worry, I wasn't sick in Pineapple Studios. Don't worry. However, I did probably one of the world's worst dance auditions in my life. I mean, I'm already not the best dancer, but I can pick up routines quite quickly and I can look at something and understand how it looks. And even though it doesn't look as good in say my body as it does in maybe another body, I can definitely get by. I really struggled. I mean, it was a two hour dance call and we did four dances. They weren't full numbers, but they were quite lengthy. So we did a couple of different ones. And then the last part was Halloween. Boom, 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 it's Halloween, boom, 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 it's Halloween. From Be More Chill. And there's like this big jump section in it. I was doing okay. And then the last, I want to say, 16 counts. I'm still sure he never showed it. It's like I just missed the entire thing of it. And then we were having to do it in groups of four in the middle. And it came to the last 16 counts. I had no idea. I, I was like, how is everyone doing this dance? Because I didn't see him teach this. I don't know. It was like my brain wasn't there. I ended up just like jumping around. It was like some kind of voodoo. What a surprise. I didn't get a recall. <laughs> It's fine. I ended up working on the show on some marketing anyway, so that was quite fun. Mmm, how ridiculous. 
So I suppose that wasn't really about the audition, but more about the fact that I thought I'd gone crazy. But I do think that if that hadn't have happened in the morning, then I would have done a lot better in that audition. And I'm so frustrated that that happened. It is what it is. So anyway, they are just a few audition experiences that I had that are a bit ridiculous. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you've had any bad auditions down below as well. I love to hear them. And if you want more stuff like this, then let me know as well. I will see you soon. I love you lots. Bye.